Oh, sorry. Twice. Hey, it's Gordon here with uh, Week 10, a year with MyMOA Unscripted. I'm here with Mo Dixon and Victoria Vox. We're just coming off the Gorge Ukulele Festival, which was a blast this weekend. And they and a number of others were in town for it. And I thought it might be fun to have them on camera and their ukuleles and listen to them working some stuff out. People have asked where the name Mayamoe comes from. And uh, of course the, the Mo or Moe in the name is from Mo Dixon. The Maya part of it is uh, a play on our last name, Mayor. We're trying to think of a you know good name for the company and we wanted to incorporate our last names. As you know from a previous video, without Mo, there is no Maya Moe. He's the one that asked us to build the first ukulele for him. So we thought of combining our names to create the company name. But we thought Maymo sounded kind of dumb, so we made it Maya Mo. But we thought that wasn't too cool either. We wanted it to sound vaguely Hawaiian. Uh, I'm not sure I'd do that again. Uh, but uh, at the time, it felt like we wanted to show some connection to Hawaii, and uh, so we thought Moe instead of Mo might be, might be kind of nice. So that's where the name came from. Mo's playing here with his uh, tenor mango resonator, and Victoria, of course, has her Flying V Myrtle Cutaway tenor classic. And uh, thanks, guys. And maybe I'm going to just touch the mouse here so we make it bright again. Maybe the computer died? Oh. No, the computer doesn't die. It just goes to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, maybe they talk a little bit about their instruments and why they play them or what they like or don't like about them. Did you introduce us already? I did. Oh, well, you were playing. Oh, yeah. Victoria. Oh. Mo Dixon. Just in case they thought you were Victoria. Oh. You've been mistaken, I think, maybe for Victoria in the past. So... I don't know, Mo. You've got uh, how many? How many Maya Moes do you have now? I have four. Four of them. Yeah, four. This is a uh, a mango resonator right here. It's kind of a cool one. It's got it's got the the headstock right there. Don't ever ask us to do an inlay on the headstock. We've done one, and that's the Mo. With our process, but we figured, you know, if the guy's responsible for the company, we'll do something one of a kind for him. So we put this pineapple. Mo Man in the uh, in the headstock. Is. And this one was uh, it just rode down here on the back of my motorcycle. <laughs> so Mo comes in to the festival on his motorcycle from across the river here in the gorge, and uh, got all his winter motorcycle gear on, and the ukulele strung or slung over his shoulder. My my favorite part about this, uh, the, uh, I like playing resonators. I like playing the the classic and the super soprano is just uh, is. One of my favorite ones around the house. Last night I played the Super Soprano. I think the, almost the whole evening. Right? It, yeah, and it was, uh, and uh, and I have a six string, which is one of my favorites as well too, because that one uh, it's like playing a harp. When I'm, I, I put in my hands, it just feels like it's just almost a, a classical or, or a, a, it's more Hawaiian for me. You know, it's just floating. What about you? Well, um, this is my my only Maya Moe. It's a, a custom built ukulele though, and uh, I picked out the wood and everything, and I love it. And it um, it's my low G ukulele, um, but I also play with a high G too. But uh, Your this is Koloha normal. Is high yeah, G, my yeah. Koloha is high G. Yeah. And. Um, this is myrtle wood, which is just really gorgeous and um, kind of like lightning bolts and feathers and wings. And I call this my flying V because there's little V's right there. <laughs> but I think, you know, I, I have, uh, I guess our people ask about our philosophy on musicians playing our instruments, and we don't have any deals with our musicians. We love to have them in the hands of great players like Mo and Victoria and love it when they choose to play our instrument, but we also believe that musicians gotta play the instrument that feels right for them, for that song, that moment, that time. And sometimes it's a Mayamoe, and sometimes it's not. And I think it's a cool thing about the yeah. ukulele market. I think know? every instrument has such a different voice, and uh, as a songwriter, 
sometimes a, an instrument, a, a different instrument can inspire um, a different song. And there's some, I don't know, just kind of... Uh, oh, especially uh, the resonator, you know, when you start playing the honky tonk stuff, it, this is this is what it's all mm-hmm. about right here because it's and uh, it's not so much uh, if in the ragtime, mm-hmm. it's just perfect for that. Where that's good for uh, really great for singing. And yeah, I enjoy. I I do enjoy the the low G probably uh, more and more. Um, but uh, yeah, this this uh, instrument is really great to play. I'm, I'm not really sure what they do, but with the neck, but it feels great. <laughs> I use the low G because I have to play lead a lot of times for different artists and stuff. And uh, and um, on my classic, I have a high G, and that's uh, that, that's that one's the great one for like ballads and mm. songs like that, where you know you you just want. What I love about the high G is when when I can. Uh, I can bring a bring a song up and bring a song down in the middle, and the, you know for the dynamics of it, because mm-hmm. you, you you're always hearing that that ping up there. And, uh, but I think I tell I tell people that you know if you're going to own two ukuleles, string one high G and one low G, because it's like a different instrument. People say, well, which is best? There's no best. I think, I think that that would almost be better than having like two different sizes of ukuleles, because I think. As you become more comfortable, like I, this is a tenor, and um, you get comfortable with the fret spacing. And I remember when I first started out on a, it was a fluke by um, the uh, flea market music, and I had a concert. And when I moved up to a tenor, it was like, oh, I need to stretch a little further. And so I think if you can, um, you know, be comfortable on a certain fretboard size, mm-hmm. you know, just even changing up within a high G and a low G, it gives you. Um, different options. Can you touch the mouse and bring us back to life? Sorry for those of you on screen. We we uh, oh, you we like touch to see ourselves. Yeah. So Over seven minutes. You know, I, I I agree with that. I'd say almost in in, in closing that um, you know if you're going to have a quiver of ukuleles, I would have uh, I like the, you know the tenor tenor size, and I I would start with uh, you know a high G or a low G, and then have the other, and then I think I'd have a six string, and then a resonator, and then a banjo. I think mm-hmm. those become specialty instruments. And in closing, I'd say the first time I heard you play the six string at the Denver Ukulele Festival, mm-hmm. you played Bristlecone Pine, which you folks can look up on YouTube. That's I, that harp feeling, you know, where it just feels like that it, it, harp. It was just stunning. And I think I've talked about this before. Victoria is the inspiration for this 52 week series of ours. She did last year, every week, a cover song. But this week is doing. Uh, this year, yeah, this year. is different. not you're not going to do 52 originals this week. week God, no. She's writing a new original song every week of the year, and you can sign up for that project. It's 52 bucks. Where do they go to sign up? Uh, VictoriaVox.com. Well, that's a surprise, surprise. <laughs> but um, man, I'd recommend it. Uh, you've done eight weeks so far, I think, and uh, I loved uh, week eight. Just blew me away. Mm-hmm. I loved it. So, uh, and I think that was on a baritone, wasn't it? No, I was on this one. Well, then I double love it. So, all right. (laughs) Thanks, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Take care.